Kings Island is a historic amusement park that opened in 1972 in Mason, Ohio. They are known for rejuvenating the, at the time, dying interest in roller coasters that lasted for several decades before opening the racer with the park, resulting in a big upswing in roller coasters being constructed once again, which ultimately led to the first coaster war. I'm going to be analyzing many aspects of this park, which I've had the opportunity to visit on a few occasions, and giving my in-depth thoughts on the different facets of Kings Island, what they do great, what's not so great, and maybe some things that could be improved upon. Upon parking and walking up to the entrance gate, you'll notice that these gates haven't been updated in quite some time. It is not the most grand entrance, but once you walk through, you are greeted with a spectacular view of the iconic Main Street, with your eye leading all the way down the fountains to the 300 foot tall Eiffel Tower attraction. The buildings in the front are very German feeling, directly influenced by Bavarian architecture. Immediately upon entering and taking all of this in, you will notice that the atmosphere at this park is very nice, which is one of the things I love about Kings Island. Though the park is huge, and lacks any real theming, Cedar Fair has managed to keep much of the charm that the park holds and preserve much of the history in a tasteful way. Unlike many parks of this caliber, Kings Island also has a lot of really nice foliage throughout, and everything is also kept up very well in terms of cleaning and maintenance. This is also a very clean park. I would say that out of the four current Cedar Fair parks I've visited, Kings Island seems to be the cleanest. Not that the other Cedar Fair parks aren't, because that's definitely not the case, but this just seems to have a lot of extra attention put into that. I did visit the park for a night during Haunt in 2019, and though I don't really do Haunt attractions, I will say that Kings Island Haunt left a fantastic impression on me. The atmosphere of the park just lends itself so well to a Halloween event like this, and it really draws you into that feeling very well. Definitely much more immersive than something like Halloweekens at Cedar Point, which pales in comparison. During Haunt, Kings Island just takes on a whole new life it seems, and really becomes a very creepy place. The many trees found throughout the park definitely are an aid to this, as everything is just so dark and really sets the tone, along with all of those fantastic night rides to be found here. But of course... Kings Island is mainly known for one thing, the rides. Kings Island, specifically, is home to a huge quantity of roller coasters, 14 as of this review. Of course, they have some really iconic coasters that hold a lot of historical significance to the industry, such as Racer, The Beast, and Flight of Fear, but also many high thrill coasters that have been introduced in more recent years, including Banshee, Diamondback, and Mystic Timbers, along with Orion opening this year. Beyond the coasters, Kings Island has quite a limited selection of thrilling flat rides though, the only ones being Delirium and Drop Tower. Maybe One Seeker as well, if you go by the listing on the park's website. There is also Slingshot and Extreme Skyflyer, though those are upcharge attractions. Another type of ride that this park really does well though, is family-oriented rides as well as kids rides. Kings Island has been known for a long time now for its huge selection of rides for children, having one of the most loved kids areas out there. This area includes three kids coasters, the Boo Blasters Dark Ride, a Charlie Brown themed log flume, surf dog, and many of your typical spinning kids rides. As far as rides for the whole family, there are many options like Antique Autos, Viking Fury, and Congo Falls, along with common classic flat rides. As you can see, Kings Island really does a lot of great things in terms of rides that all types of audiences can enjoy. I would like to see some more thrilling flat rides, as the options right now are extremely limited, but the great selection of thrilling coasters definitely helps to fill that void, giving thrill seekers an ample amount of things to stay busy. One common criticism I've heard about Kings Island is that though they have many great roller coasters, they don't really have that one that stands tall among many of the best out there. While I can agree that many of the rides here could be argued as the best in the park, to me that doesn't take away from how awesome this collection really is, and will surely only grow in the future. Another thing I also took note of with Kings Island that, in my experience, they did better than many parks, was in regards to the staff. During my multiple visits here, I encountered many staff members who were just so caring and ready to help if you had any issues or concerns. 
I actually had quite an awful situation to deal with when I visited Closing Weekend in 2019, and I went to guest services and the staff here were especially understanding and ready to try to help me resolve this particular emergency as quick as possible. Major kudos to guest services at Kings Island. This is something that I think a lot of us can forget about and maybe take for granted a lot of times, but having well-trained employees that are ready to help you to give you the best experience can really help to turn a bad day at an amusement park into a much more pleasant experience. In addition, the operations at Kings Island are also quite great in my opinion. I have visited the park on some very busy days and many of the large coasters had very long lines, but the crews kept those queues moving right along and I didn't wait any more than about an hour for Banshee, Beast, and Diamondback, which also have the awesome capacity working for them. Nice job Kings Island crew. To wrap things up with this review, I will say that Kings Island is without a doubt one of the best amusement parks out there in my eyes. They do a lot of things very well, provide great atmosphere and charm, and to be quite honest, I think parks like Cedar Point could learn a few things from this park. This place is full of very rich history that is honored pretty well, and you can feel that when you walk in here. Everything just feels so well maintained and welcoming, with much attention put into detail, whether it comes to guest experience or keeping the park looking great as a whole. I would like to know your thoughts though. What do you think about Kings Island in general? And do you think it is one of the better amusement parks in the country, or do you think it could use much improvement? Let me know all of your thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and check out my many other park reviews in a playlist on my channel, and you can also like my page Coaster Daddy on Facebook and follow me at Coaster Daddy Official on Instagram. Thanks so much for watching. This is Coaster Daddy. Bye.